Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Ultra X3 1600 watt power supply. What's included is the user's manual, flex force cables, two power cables, screws for mounting the power supply in the case, and the power supply. The Ultra X3 line of power supplies range from 600 watts to 1600 watts. I will be reviewing the 1600 watt model, which is one of the most powerful power supplies currently on the market. Now how is this wattage determined? To understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 160 watts and the 12 volt is 1400 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards, and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also, some might be interested to know the peak and on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt is 24 amps and the plus 5 volt is 28 amps. Now, many of today's high wattage power supplies have 2 to 4 plus 12 volt rails, but this power supply has one very large plus 12 volt rail, which is 100 and 17 amps. A single plus 12 volt rail is preferred in a multiple video card setup. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. If, however, you are going hardcore and have a multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select the power supply that's above 700 watts. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply is 80% under typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, overvoltage, undervoltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend getting a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has Active PFC. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. The first thing you'll notice is how large it is. It's not only one of the most powerful power supplies on the market, but it's clearly one of the longest. It comes with a steel housing, so it's fairly heavy and has a highly reflective paint finish. They include a 135 millimeter and a 80 millimeter fan, which will provide ample cooling power even in the hottest environments. This power supply has lots of leads and they are all modular, sleek looking flex force cables. As the name suggests, these cables are super flexible and that allows them to bend around almost anything. They are perfect for hiding cables behind the motherboard tray or neatly tucking them out of sight. This design also increases airflow inside the case by about 30% over standard power supply cables. The modular design makes connecting and disconnecting leads a snap. It also means that you only need to use the leads required for your particular setup. Finally, have a listen to this power supply.
1600 watts is a lot of power even if you have a quad core dual video card setup with lots of other hardware it would probably only use 700 to 900 watts so why would you need a 1600 watt power supply of course in the near future there's going to be bigger and better video cards that are going to require more power and this would definitely meet that power requirement the power supply itself looks quite nice it's got two quiet fans and it has those flex force modular cables i absolutely adore those because you only need to use the ones that you require and they are so thin and flexible you can put them just about anywhere it truly improves the airflow inside the case and they look amazing now the only couple of drawbacks with this power supply and they're to be expected with 1600 watts it's going to be very expensive and the power supply is quite long so it might not fit in many ATX cases full towers I would imagine this would fit in but mid tower cases it might be tricky so if you're purchasing this power supply be very aware of that fact but overall this is a 100% kick-ass product again my name is Rodney Reynolds this has been another video review be sure to check back very soon I will have a brand new one for you then also pop into my website at www.3dgamerman.com and while you're there you can go to the forums and register and remember registration is completely free also keep in mind you can find out a lot more on this product in the forums and as a final note if you love watching my video reviews please remember to help support 3dgamerman.com if you wish to support please visit support3gm.com until the next time take care Fourteen hundred watts, which is essentially has this is essentially has the to this power supply is determined. Double what even the most hardcore people would use. The, hardcore people? What is that? Can you explain yourself, Bradney? Form factor cases. Overall, this is a one hundred percent kick-ass product. <laughs> kick-ass product. Do you know?